It's time now for a look least in local news. In the news, the case of the state of Georgia versus former Justice Police Officer Stephen Wright has been continued and no new date has been set. He was expected to go to trial today with jury selection getting in the way this morning, but again, the case has been granted continuance. Once again, no new date has been set. Wright faces several charges, including sexual assault and violation of his oath of office. Justice PD fired him immediately after his arrest by the GBI. He's been out on bond, but has been banished from Wayne County. City just have settled a lawsuit surrounding the case. The settlement, $200,000. Once again, the case will not begin today. Again, no new date has been scheduled. We had Governor Brian Kemp on Friday's Bitch and Bob show, and for the past several days, the governor is signing bills into laws. On Friday, he signed House Bill 189, which increases the maximum weight of some trucks on Georgia highways for two years. House Bill 189 was one of the most hotly contested bills in this year's legislative session, and our state representative Stephen Meeks worked hard to get the legislation passed for agriculture and timber industries. That they needed the higher truck weights in order to compete with other states. Traffic safety advocates, the Georgia DOT, and local governments across the state said heavier trucks will mean more traffic fatalities and cost taxpayers billions of dollars and more for road maintenance. Compromise emerged late in the session as the compromise is that it's in place for two years that will give legislators time to work out a permanent compromise to find ways to pay for billions in road and rail improvements that Georgia DOT say will be needed to accommodate as expected to rise in freight traveling across the state. Celebration of life for 53-year-old Andy Davis Phillips of Odom, Georgia, is going to take place tomorrow at 5 p.m. at the Reinhardt Chapel with Reverend Matt Dennison officiating. Family will receive friends one hour prior to the service at the funeral home. Andy Phillips passed away on Saturday, May 6th. She was a 1987 graduate of Wayne County High School, was a star on the Lady Yellow Jacket softball team. After high school, she was hired at Brunswick Pulp and Paper, worked her way up to the administrative assistant in the changing names from Georgia Pacific to Plum Creek Timber Company, and then presently Weyerhaeuser. Survivors are her husband of 34 years, Mike Phillips of Odom, Georgia, a son, Bradley Mallory Phillips, a grandson, Brady, and a granddaughter on the way. Her parents, David and Linda Davis of Odom, Georgia, a brother, Adam, Heidi Davis, a nephew, Alex Mary Davis, a niece, Daisy Davis, a brother and stepsister-in-law, Wesley and Becky Phillips, and their son, Paxton Kara Phillips, a great nephew, Landon. Again, in lieu of flowers, memorials can be made to the Pine Forest Men's Golf Association Fund, P.O. Box 70, Jessup, Georgia. Brian Horner Sons Funeral Home in charge of all the arrangements. Once again, that celebration of her life will take place tomorrow at 5 p.m. at the Reinhardt Chapel with Reverend Matt Dennison officiating. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages of Police State. Wayne County Board of Education is set to meet for a work session at 6 p.m. tomorrow at the or Tuesday at the Tech Center on the agenda under discussion information, capital outlay projects, middle school athletics, school calendar, summer opportunities, athletic handbook, and a Executive session discuss personnel, all that taking place tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Tech Center. The Wayne County Historical Society is set to meet Thursday, May 9th at Captain Joe Seafood Restaurant. Guest speaker will be Dink Neesmith, who will be talking about his book, The Last Man to Lay You Down, which is about his dad, Big Dink, also relate to growing up in a funeral home in the Jessup in the 60s. Program begins Thursday at 7, preceded by a Dutch meal at 6. Again, memberships encouraged. Guests are welcome. That's Thursday, May 9th at Captain Joe Seafood Restaurant. The Wayne County Catfish Tournament is set for June 3rd and 4th. Again, signups are taking place. Waiting in tournament headquarters will once again be at J.C. Fairgrounds at J.C. Landing. Entry fees for the tournament is $100 per fisherman with a minimum of at least two fishing in a boat. Big fish pot entry is $10 per fisherman. Again, the event gets underway Saturday, June 3rd at 12 noon. Continues until Sunday, June 4th at 12 noon. Again, for more information, contact the Wayne County Board of Tourism. The number is 912-427-3233 or check out their website, www.waynetourism.com. You can also register on site Saturday morning and the fish are out there ready for the boats June 3rd and 4th. We'll come back with a final news note after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Finally, in the news, I repeatedly have stated time and time again that I do not have any social media. I don't have Facebook, but several of my friends up at Lovett over the weekend have told me the school board member, Sharon Daniel, Posted a nine-minute video on her Facebook page, and that's her prerogative. Haven't seen it, nor do I care to see it. She's apparently upset because I reported that the work session concerning combining middle school athletics, she brought race into the equation, and I simply stated last week, and we'll be glad to repeat it, that race has nothing to do with this conversation, the decision on whether to combine the middle school athletic programs. Once again, this proposal is being put forward to the school board from our athletic director, Justin McDonald, who Sharon Daniel has yet to have one conversation with, from her assistant AD head football coach, Jay Bo Shaw, who they didn't even ask one question of at the work session or let him speak, and from the two middle school ADs, Jamie Knight and Sheila Brockington. 
The AD, Justin McDonald, appeared on the Butch and Bob Show weeks ago and went into great detail on how this merger will be for the benefit of all middle school athletics and for the overall athletic program, and that is why they have made the proposal in the first place. Ms. Daniel with board meetings continues to say she's talked to this coach from this county, this coach from another county. I asked her personally why isn't she talking to our AD and our assistant AD for the information. Is Burger King calling McDonald's to ask how to prepare hamburgers? Why is she not talking to our Wayne County coaches who have made this proposal? Three points the AD and Jay Bush Shaw and the others make are as follows. One, they can't. They see that sixth graders simply cannot compete with eighth graders. I told the story how I know personally of a middle school sixth grade baseball player this year who made his middle school athletic team and never saw the playing field during any game. That middle school athlete most likely gone from the program, and that's just one of hundreds of examples that has been taking place over the past several years and that the AD Justin McDonald and Jay Bo Shaw would like to see corrected. They are tired of losing athletes in the athletic program. Number two, middle schools teams play against schools with much larger number of students, and it's a disadvantage the AD and Jay Bo Shaw are trying to correct. Former high school principal and superintendent and my dear friend Jay Brinson, God bless him, always told me it's about numbers. It's just like the high school moving from 5A to 4A. You want to be able to compete with schools basically the same size and the same number of students. And that's the purpose also of this proposal because currently our middle school athletes are competing against schools with much larger numbers. Third, and there are others, but the rivalry between Martha Puckett and Martha Williams is something that the AD and assistant AD want to get away from. Their view is everyone is a yellow jacket and this rivalry between the two middle schools just isn't healthy for the program in general. And these are just three examples of why the proposal has been put forth before the Board of Education, and hopefully the majority of the board will listen and consider what the men in charge of our athletic program are proposing. Board Member Sharon Daniels made it clear from the outset that she will vote against this proposal. I stated at the time and repeated today she's entitled to her opinion. But what she is not entitled to is to bring racial aspect to a proposal that has nothing to do with race. It's about equality, not equity, which she and the two middle school principals talked about at the work session. One of those principals has resigned and is leaving, so why do we care about his opinion? The incoming middle school principal was at the meeting. He has years of coaching experience, but he was never asked to speak or asked his opinion. This is an athletic discussion, and a man who coached in years with our high school program isn't asked his opinion. Why is that? In closing, I could care less about a Sharon Daniel Facebook post. She can attack me all she wants. But what's sad is for the, those who did watch it, keep in mind she admits on the video she didn't hear the broadcast news and she didn't listen to the Butch and Bob show. She's just accepting secondhand information, which we all know is not good policy. Again, Ms. Daniel, how about talking to the people who have worked diligently, diligently to prepare the proposal for the merger and ask yourself who knows more about this topic? Athletic Director Justin McDonald and Head Football Coach Jay Bo Shaw or you? Well, I already know the answer. Again, I could care less what you had to say on your Facebook page. Finally, we say all the time that this chair is open on the Bitch and Bob show. We want to hear from our government officials. But she can do what all other guests do, and that's pick up the phone and request a time on the show. I've yet to hear from Ms. Daniels. I hope she does come on the show, and I'll give her the t- first two questions in advance. First question is, why did you vote against the superintendent's recommendation to hire Jason Brown as the new Scriven Elementary Principal? Inquiring minds want to know. And the second question is, why in the world have you not had one conversation with Wayne County Athletic Director Justin McDonald, who has worked with Assistant AD Jay Bush Shaw and the two middle school principals who worked hours to put this proposal together, a proposal they believe is for the best interest of the overall athletic program, for the best interest of every child involved in the middle school program. Once again, the seat is open. Pick up the phone and ask for a time and date. I'll be waiting. That's going to do it for latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan saying have a great day.